What's up guys? Uh, welcome to my second video tutorial on uh, QGIS. In our first video we had uh, looked at how to download and install QGIS software in uh, Windows. And here we are again looking at uh, how to... Uh, today we look at the how to explore the QGIS user interface. And uh, we'll see what entails the QGIS uh, user interface, the widgets, the menus, and what have you. So we are going to open our QGIS that we have installed. So kindly refer to the previous video on how to install a QGIS. The link will be is in the description. So we are opening the QGIS. And uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, this is the user interface. So we have the title of the project at the top, uh, top left, which is saying untitled project because you have not created any project or saved any project. So we also have uh, the a number of items at the top here. Uh, we have uh, the project edit view, layer settings. So these are uh, the menus, okay? And then below it, we have uh, two rows. So these two rows are what we call the toolbars. So we have one that is called the project toolbar. We have another one that is called the data source manager toolbar. Below these toolbars, we have uh, what we call the browser that uh, shows uh, a number of things inside here that we are, go uh, we are going to look at uh, later. And we also have the layers. Uh, and, and, and one thing to notice is that we have some two buttons on each of these uh, windows on the left, uh, these two panels. And then inside here we have uh, some information. Uh, we have all these uh, the number of uh, uh, items which are, uh, have been published from the QGIS uh, website. And then below it we have uh, the projects template. And uh, we have this new empty project uh, template. So this, all these items consist of the QGIS uh, user interface. And uh, I almost forgot, we have also some search here, whereby you can do a search on different items, settings, layouts, and all that. And then we have what we call the status bar. The status bar is this uh, bar below here that has a coordinate. It has also the scale. We have something called the magnifier. We have the rotation. And we have uh, the some checkbox here that uh, is written render and uh, it's uh, checked. And then you have something here written EPSG 4326. And then we also have something here written messages. So one thing you'll realize when, when my cursor, I place my cursor on top of most of these items, it displays some message. This is what is called a tooltip. So it displays a tooltip explaining what uh, the item that uh, the cursor is placed on top, what it's uh, about. It just gives us a few uh, little information on what those items are. So we are going to look at uh, the menus. Uh, we'll start with the menus. Uh, another thing that uh, maybe we could look at, uh, we can also minimize and maximize you can minimize the whole uh, QGIS window. And uh, we'll start by looking at uh, some of these uh, uh, items. So we have the project. So this project uh, menu constitutes items uh, that are related to a QGIS project, whereby you can create a new project. You can also create a project from a template and in this case there is there isn't any template so there's an arrow here at the left a small arrow uh, you it could have opened or displayed a list of templates if we have uh, had created then we have open uh, this one simply when you click on it it tries it attempts to open uh, items or it attempts to open uh, the project from a folder or in our file system and then we have you can also open a project from PostgreSQL database. And we, we can also open uh, our project from a geo package. 
So one thing to mention is that uh, we have something called a geo package. Uh, this geo package is a, but we're also going to look at it at a later stage. It is it is a a, a package that consists of uh, data. It is a data exchange that uh, has re been recently adopted uh, to work with the QGIS and it is a default uh, data data source for QGIS but we're also going to look at that uh, later. We have uh, open recent uh, so this one simply opens the recent menu uh, recent projects sorry it opens the recent project in this case I do not have any recent projects so it is empty then you can also choose to close if I have a current project that is running I can close the project I can save I can also save us uh, if I want to save the project uh, in the given name and I can also save to uh, a template. I can also save just like opening from I can save to a Postgres uh, database and I can also save to a geo package. Then I can also choose to revert to uh, maybe a previous uh, version of the project. And then I can also check on the project properties. So when I click on this project properties, it brings a window of a uh, number of items so I can choose to save uh, my project uh, project home title I can select the default uh, color for the layers and the background color there's also metadata where I can add uh, details about the uh, the project and I can it has a number of tabs so we are also going to look at this uh, later. Then we have something called the CRS. The CRS stands for Coordinate Reference System. We also have some uh, default uh, styles and symbols. Then we have data sources. Can, uh, when you save the project, uh, the list of data sources appears here for each layer that is within that project. Then we also have something here written relations. Uh, we also have the variable. Uh, the variable uh, we have global variables and project variables so these project variables are specific to a QGIS project and the global variable but variables are, are fetched globally from the computer as you can see we have a number of items here operating system platform release name and all that and we have also macros whereby you can you can do it to you can record some macros uh, for guys who are semi, uh, familiar with macros from uh, the Microsoft Office. And then we also have the QGIS server. As I had mentioned in my, uh, uh, maybe in my earlier video, or as he, you can, f you'll find out is that we have, uh, we also have QGIS server, just like we have the QGIS desktop. Yeah, so these are the menus that appear under the project, uh, or rather the project properties. And then we also have uh, snapping options. We have import and export. You can import, uh, you can export or import your map from a, a drawing file or a DXF uh, card uh, computer aided design drawing. You can also export to the same. You can export your map to PDF portable document format. You can also export your map to uh, map to an image. And then you can uh, create a print layout that can be used to print your map. Then you can also create a new report and then you can design your layout, your print layout using the layout manager. And here when you, on these layouts, it shows us the layouts that have already been created. Since you haven't created any layouts, then uh, the item here is empty. And then you can also click on exiting QGIS or uh, to close the QGIS uh, window. So we have the control plus Q. These are it's just a, sh a desk, a desk uh, desktop or keyboard, sorry, shortcut that you can use to close your QGIS. You can use control plus P to print your map, uh, print layout. You can also use control shift P. So all these item, uh, num uh, shortcuts that have been highlighted here, you can use them to do the same for the menus that are here. Next, we're going to look at the edit. So the edit, uh, under the edit, you see that you realize that many menus are disabled or they are grayed out. This is because I do not have any layers displayed on my user interface. But we are also going to explore this further. And uh, you'll realize that each menu has been divided by something that we call a slider. Uh, sorry, a separator. This line, there's a line 
uh, be after the redo between redo and the cut features select and add feature modify attributes and uh, rotate features we have uh, uh, what we call a separator then we have the view you can view your map uh, you can view your map in 3d you can pan your map and you can do a lot of items that are related to viewing the map you can zoom to a full extent of your map and all that so one thing that uh, i would like to highlight here i would want us to look at uh, the last items whereby we have the panels and the toolbars so let's start with the panels so the panels uh, consist of different uh, you know different menus or different items that appear on the QGIS uh, window or inside the QGIS window so we have two items that have been checked we have the browser that is highlighted here uh, where my cursor is at the moment and then we also have the layers highlighted uh, and uh, on my cursor here so these two items are the ones that are showing here on the left side we have the browser and you also have the layers so these two are panels in other quarters we can refer to them as uh, dockable or dock dockable widgets because you can dock them and you can also undock them so you can dock them anywhere uh, left right and you can undock them and then they are also placed in tabs as you can see the layers uh, panel has obscured the browser panel so for me to activate or to view the browser panel i can just click on the browser at the bottom here you have the browser and you have the layers so let me close these panels and uh, also for clarity let me just close these items that are here so we have our empty uh, user interface so to enable i've disabled or i've closed this panel so to enable these panels i'll just come here and click on view panel and then i enable i click on the browser as you can see the browser panel has appeared again and i can also move it uh, back to where it was so you can move and dock and undock your uh, panels as you please or as you prefer so we also have the panels and our panels we had the layers initially so this is the layers uh, one thing you'll realize it has come appeared on the uh, layers uh, on the bottom part here, on these tabs so likewise i can enable so many panels so i can enable a uh, layer order as you can see the more i continue clicking or enabling the more these layers continue uh, showing and then I can go back to my pa view panels and I can enable I can look at something like the processing toolbox and you see on my right that there is something that has uh, been enabled the processing toolbox likewise I can do the same for quite a number of items like the statistics uh, we have the statistics uh, panel and uh, we can also look at uh, log messages as you can see it has uh, also popped in the log messages so all these panels continue populating or appearing on the user interface so i'm just going to close them for now and uh, we are going to look at uh, another item still within the view that is the uh, toolbars so these toolbars under toolbars we see there are a number of toolbars that have been have been incorporated or have been uh, rather have been activated so we have the attributes data source digitizing help label uh, map navigation tool plugins toolbar projects toolbar vector toolbar and the web toolbar so these toolbars are what we see at the top on this top uh, part be, uh, below the the menus the menu items so uh, just like the panels they are also dockable and undockable uh, by dockable i mean that they can be docked they can be you know put inside this uh, window and they can also be removed and put uh, or put elsewhere so i can also add them on the side I can also add them on the side just like the panels and i can also move them to the bottom and i can also move them to the uh, left uh, right sorry so those are our toolbars so 
just like the panels to enable or disable to deactivate these toolbars i can just uh, uncheck all this and the toolbars view toolbars i can disable that uh, i can disable digitizing toolbar i can also the view toolbars i can uh, disable the help toolbar i can also uh, disable the label toolbar so let me disable all these toolbars and we can see how the QGIS looks without the toolbars. So another thing to consider is that depending on the work that you are doing, if you need a, big, a bigger view space, then you can just work with the, a number, a few toolbars that you would wish to have. So this is a QGIS user interface without the toolbars. So let me just enable one of the toolbars, uh, maybe the vector toolbar. So this is a vector toolbar and it seems not to have any menus uh, maybe because I've not loaded any vectors. So let's look at something else like the also the raster toolbar. So the raster toolbar has different menus that but they are grayed out because I have not loaded any uh, raster data. So we can also enable something like map navigation. So this is a map navigation and uh, we can see that we have a number of menus and uh, so that is uh, all about the uh, different toolbars so you can also customize your own toolbars um, if you uh, understand the QGIS uh, user interface well you can code and customize your own toolbars so the other thing we are going to look at we are going to look at uh, the layer so under the layer we have something that is also very important that is used more often than not. Uh, we have the data source manager. So this data source manager is very very important. Uh, it is used to, as it as the name mentioned, it is used to manage uh, data. And uh, you, this is through this is how we are able to import data. And you can see we have different data, what we call the data sources. Uh, we have the vector data source, raster data source, and uh, the list continues. Uh, up to the last item which is a uh, geo node and you can also through this data source manager you can browse into the file system and add uh, different uh, data sources so for example i would want maybe let me try and add uh, some data from uh, open street map so see this is the map so the, i've done this using the data source uh, data source uh, manager and uh, we can do a number of items but we are also going to look at it in a separate video when we are adding importing our data uh, viewing uh, visualizing data and then we have the settings the settings menu is also very very important uh, you can create a user profile you can also uh, open the style manager and uh, you know try to style your data differently create a new style create uh, tags for your style and all that and uh, you can also be able to customize the uh, projections we're also going to look at uh, projections in some uh, next uh, tutorials then you can also customize your keyboard shortcuts as you please and uh, you can also uh, uh, customize your interface you can say you can decide as i had shown you uh, in a few minutes ago you can be able to enable or disable toolbars and save that setting so if you do not if you want your qgis without the toolbars you can come and uh, customize it here and uh, you know you can apply and you can save that uh, setting so we have another menu that is very very important which is uh, options and uh, let me first just close this window and uh, open a new project I'm going to discard the current project so this is what we have in our new uh, project it is empty so i would want to i uh, would want to customize how the qgis looks like when it's loading so i can use under these options menu we have the general item so under this general item i can decide there's this menu called the project files so I can decide what I want to see in the in the 
uh, default uh, user interface. Currently, by default, it usually has a welcome page. So I can decide to add if I want more reasons, specific or new. Let me just leave it as a welcome page. And uh, let me just close my QGIS and open it again. So by default, QGIS uh, displays a uh, it displays uh, what we call a welcome page. But you can uh, customize that and you can disable that welcome page. So this welcome page uh, shows us uh, a project templates uh, title. And I do not, uh, let's say I do not want to see these. I just want to have my empty QGIS project empty. So I can come and customize this under settings, options. And I can select uh, new okay and uh, by selecting new this means that it's just going to show me an empty it's just like the, like coming here and clicking on a new uh, project so let me close my qgis and open it once again to see the changes Yeah, so this is how it looks like. You'll realize that we do not have what we had earlier, uh, project templates. So that that can be customized uh, inside the settings, um, uh, the settings uh, options uh, file. You can also change the user interface. So we can change the user interface under this uh, application. Uh, then we have. Uh, as you can see, there is um, there's something that is written here in italics. QGIS restart is required. So for any changes that we make on the style and the user, inter uh, the u the user interface theme, then we need to restart our QGIS. So let me start with the icon size. We can edit our icon size. And you see on highlighting, it, it uh, displays our icon size. So for depending on your uh, vision or your... Uh, preferred uh, icon size you can adjust your icon size using the these uh, item here for the icon size so I'll just uh, leave it as it as it was by default 16 so I can also edit my user interface uh, I've changed the user interface theme to blend of gray let me click OK and restart my QGIS You'll realize that there is something that has uh, will have changed on the user interface. And as you can see, my user interface is uh, a bit grayish and uh, there is a black of some dark uh, highlight on these or background on these menus up here. So I can uh, return it to default and uh, close the QGIS and open it again. So you can choose your preferred uh, user interface uh, theme. Uh, likewise, you can also change the way under settings and options. You can change the way the style for the QGIS. So I'm going to change it from Fusion to something like the Windows Vista, the first option here. And I'm going to click OK. And once again, I'm going to restart my QGIS. Let to close it and start it again. Yeah, so let's see the changes that have appeared. You'll realize that the window has, uh, you know, it's a bit, uh, the user interface looks a bit different. And uh, yeah, so that, those are the f a number of items that maybe you can do with the, the these uh, options and uh, the general likewise you can change the settings uh, or you can view the system settings for your QGIS so we have the default uh, SVG path and we also for the symbols uh, that are used in QGIS you can add your path or you can remove using these plus and the minus icons at the top uh, right of each uh, box or text area likewise we have the path for for the QGIS and we also have a plugins path 
so you can add a path to the plugins um, you can also add the documentation path if you have your own default uh, documentation and then you, ca you can also edit customize and enable and disable and also customize what you call the environmental variables so these are a bit on the advanced side of QGIS but nevertheless these are just items that we have in the uh, these QGIS options and then you can also uh, co co configure the project coordinate reference system or what you see here highlighted as CRS and uh, using the options you can also uh, do a number of items with the data sources you can configure rendering uh, options you can also configure the canvas and the canvas is this big white area uh, this big white area the uh, the back that is uh, being uh, behind the options we, uh, window or the options menu we have this big white part is what you call the QGIS canvas or the map canvas and then we have a number of uh, map tools that you can use to uh, you can configure your scale and all that uh, you can configure colors project colors and all that uh, you can configure the digitizing you can configure layouts uh, you can also look at the GDAL, configure the GDAL uh, driver. GDAL stands for Geospatial Data Abstraction Library. That is the main, uh, is used to do work with the raster data. And then you can also add your uh, custom variables, uh, if you please. And then you can use QGIS uh, authentication to authenticate to uh, different other systems. You can configure it to authenticate some logins somewhere and uh, all these are a bit advanced but nevertheless they are just uh, they are items that appear under the options menu and then you can also have advanced settings you can configure a number of items uh, we also have enabling of the graphical acceleration and the processing uh, items so just going to leave it at that uh, for the settings and then we have the plugins you can use the plugins to import your own uh, plugins you can also use the plugins menu to con to start your python uh, console that uh, is uh, comes shipped uh, shipped in the qgis then we have the vector and the rest data uh, management tools so these one are specific to the vector and the raster data and these are what we are going to look at in the next uh, uh, maybe tutorials we also have the database you can configure uh, database uh, importation and exportation using the db manager and we also have the web whereby we have this meta search tool and the help uh, for the web uh, we have mesh calculators and uh, we have other processing uh, menus which contain the geo processing and uh, you know raster processing and all those uh, tools and then finally we have the help menu so this help menu if you click on the help contents what happens is that it's it's going to open the link for the qgis uh, user manual i would highly recommend you guys to look to have a look at this qgis uh, user guide to understand more on the qgis uh, about the qgis user interface and all that and uh, you can also use uh, API documentation for the developers who want to who would want to maybe integrate the QGIS API with something else or um, develop uh, QGIS or customize QGIS. And as I had earlier mentioned, is that the QGIS is an open source project, so you can customize your QGIS uh, to your needs and to your maybe organizational needs. So we also have these plugins. Uh, right now we do not have any plugins installed uh, so we, the, we when you install the plugin and it, it comes with a help menu it's going to appear on this you can also report an issue so once i click on reporting an issue it will uh, refer us to the bug reporting so you can report your bugs uh, in the maybe in the github and you can also uh, report uh, this uh, bug uh, may be placed on both of these refer to the same link so you can if you have an issue your QGIS has crashed because of something you can just place your issue in uh, github you can create your new a new issue but one uh, for you to do that you need to sign up for github 
uh, you can sign up using your email and your password and then you can uh, add your issue as you can see there are several issues here that have been have been added uh, or have been uh, added and uh, let's look at one example because this is uh, very important we have the somebody has uh, added an issue here saying the proj version are not updated they have added a screenshot and uh, they have specified even the operating system so you can also do that you can add your title for the issue and uh, the explanation uh, detail for your issue so let me minimize that and uh, we have you can also check your QGIS version uh, inside the help and you can also look at about uh, about QGIS the libraries and the softwares that have been used to develop this version and you can also look at the QGIS uh, versions and the history from version 0 0.5 up to the current version that I'm using we are using at this uh, recording it, it also shows the Q, what you call the QGIS providers and all that we have the developers the uh, contributors uh, the main contributors for these uh, the developers sorry for this software we also have the contributors for the software and the developers map so remember in my first video we talked about the QGIS community and as you can see the QGIS community is spread across the world and uh, we have so many okay we have a number of users in the Latin America and the the Americas, uh, North America. We have uh, a developer here in uh, Africa, in uh, South Africa, and we also have many, many, uh, quite a number of developers in the Europe area, and uh, the we have other developers in the uh, Asia and Australia. So you can click on any of these to see the, you know, the developers, and then we have also the translators as i had mentioned earlier you can contribute to translate qgis into your preferred language and we also have a list of donors there's a link here that shows uh, the donors uh, for qgis and their names and then we also have the license so qgis as i had mentioned is op uh, open source it has been published under the general public license uh, you can read more on that uh, you can put a link on the description below to understand on what is the GNU license. So this brings uh, us to the end of this video and uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to post them uh, and also hit uh, like and subscribe and uh, we are going to look for our next video we are going to look at uh, how to visualize uh, the downloading and visualizing our data. Uh, in QGIS, uh, both vector and uh, raster. So, goodbye, guys. Thank you.